Hey guys, please where can I find salt? Salt? Uh, 1819. Right on your left hand side, right when you get in. Okay, alright, right. thank you. Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. What are the attributes of salt? Salt adds value. It changes everything it touches. But one thing, if it's too much, it spoils the food. So the beauty of salt is not just in the ability to use it. The beauty of salt is not only in application, it's in proportion. It's in the proportion. It's important to have salt or else the food is tasteless. But one more thing is far important. It's the knowledge of how much salt to add. Many know the importance of salt and have it, but how to use it is sometimes an uncommon skill. Having salt is very much a common thing, but the knowledge of how to use it and use it proportionate, proportionate to the food is sometimes an uncommon skill. Knowing the proportion, how to add it, how much to add, is just as important a skill as having salt. What I'm discussing today is going to show you how to increase your sphere of, it's going to show you how to increase your sphere of influence. It's going to show you how to enlarge your capacity. It's going to show you how to broaden your scope it's going to show you how to be able to reach more people in your area of influence. Uh, this is for fathers, it's for, it's for protégés, it's for mentors, it's for husbands, it's for wives, it's for every one of us. We all need to increase our capacity because our ability to teach is just as critical to is very critical to our ability to lead it's important to your success as a leader not just to know stuff but to know how to show others what you know it's not just knowing things knowing how to show people what we know is just as important a skill as knowing things many of us acquire many skills knowledge experience expertise but we don't know how to show people. We don't know how to teach people. We're trying, but it's just not getting across to them. My mom showed me a few things in cooking, and she would always insist in my growing up years to be in the kitchen with her. She didn't see the kitchen as a girl stuff. She would show you this is what to do, this is how to do it and all that. But for me, one major thing was salting the food was a major issue for me because I didn't just know how much salt to add. The problem with the problem with salt is that you can't take it back. Once you add it, that's it. I remember an instance where I was very hungry and when the food was served, I felt there wasn't enough salt in it and I thought I needed a little more salt. So, I added I, I, I took the jar of salt and I was adding salt and I was adding just and I would taste it and think that oh I'd need a little more. But I I didn't know somehow that the lid on the salt jar wasn't really well uh, it wasn't tight. So in the process of me just saying, let me just add a little one pinch more of salt. <laughs> Guess what happened? All the salt just poured out into the food. It was so unfortunate and I was so hungry. You know, 
The problem with too much salt is that it makes the food useless. It doesn't add flavor anymore. It's completely distasteful and it's a total waste of all the time you spend cooking the food. This is why it's important to understand the proportions of salt because salt is a wonderful thing but the proportion must be right. So right now I have I have several sizes of cups here. This is one size, another size, another size, another size, another size. Each of them representing people from all walks of life, uh, people who are different than us, people with different levels of assimilation, people with different levels of experience, different people of different age age brackets, people of different uh, backgrounds, people of different mentalities and philosophies, different kind of people out there in the world out there. Now let's imagine that we have soup in this cup and soup in this and soup in this and soup in this, different sizes and levels of food or soup what matters right now is not how much salt i have what matters is what matters is how much salt each of them needs so i may have this much salt but it doesn't count for much as long as this is all i have to salt hmm. i hope that's making sense to somebody i have this much salt but it doesn't really matter that i have this much salt what matters right now is this little guy here how much salt do i have to put in it to add flavor to it how much salt do i have to apply to add value to it and then next is this guy how much salt do i have to add to add value to him and then next is this guy how much salt do i have to add definitely he this is gonna need more salt than this but this is going to need less salt than this guy here so it's not how much salt i have it's how much salt is needed in the soup the problem is if i approach it with how much salt i have and i add too much salt i try to add too much salt and just do it the way i like even though it's a nice soup it's been every ingredient is complete I make it distasteful. All we need to do is just add as much salt as is needed or else the, the soup is distasteful and undesirable. If I'm going to add salt to this little soup, I've just got to add just as much as it needs. That's why kids can hear their parents sometimes. That's why this is the same problem with friends, with friends, where the spouses, spouse and, the, uh, and their partners, mentors and protégés, believers and unbelievers, the same thing. We are trying to add too much salt all at once. They cannot receive all the things you learned in 20 years just all at once. How possible is that? You're going to have to be patient. You're going to have to be patient sometimes and allow them make their own mistakes, but be there to correct in love and show love unconditionally. That's how to get across to people. You need patience, just a pinch of salt at a time. You add value one at a time, a pinch of salt at a time. You cannot add all the values you are going to add to their lives all at once. Colossians 4, 6 says, Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each and every one. That's in the King James Version. Another version says, Your speech should always be pleasant and interesting and you should know how to give the right answer to everyone that's a good news translation another translation says let your language be always seasoned with the salt of grace i like that expression the salt of grace so that you may know how to add or to give every man a feeding answer that's from the waymouth 
translation. My goodness. Many times in the process of growing up, we acquire a lot of knowledge, we acquire a lot of information and until we reach the point where we forget what it means to not know what we know. So, we forget what it means to not know what we know, so we try to relate with people as though they ought to know what we know. We fail to exercise patience to bring them gradually to the next level that they need to be. Not necessarily the level where we are, but the next level that they need to be. The most important thing is to bring people, to help people to get to their next level. Even if it if that next, even if that next level is not our level, hmm, we should be pre- we should be preoccupied with helping people to get to their next level. These are three things that usually is the problem: impatience. We are often very impatient with people. If if someone, if people have been so impatient with you, you probably wouldn't have come, wouldn't have come this far. To where you are too. Secondly, we are insensitive. Sometimes the problem is insensitivity. We are too insensitive to uh, people's feelings and to their needs. Rather, we are more uh, about what we have to offer, what we want to give, than what people need to hear. And then a lot of times the, the third thing is selfishness. Most times we can be so preoccupied with showing forth what we have. We want people to know that we have so much wisdom. We want people to know that we are, are, are very skilled. We want people to know how much we know. Somebody says, I mean, it's, uh, it's becoming a common saying, maybe you haven't heard it. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. The first thing people want to know is how much you care. Not before they begin to care how much you know. But for many of us, we're trying to make people to... We're trying to put our best foot forward. We want people to know how much we know. We're quick to let people know we're this, we're that. The most important thing is we have to put people first before ourselves. It's a selfish idea when I am in a group, I'm in a place... And my preoccupation is trying to quickly get people to see that I know a lot of stuff. That's a self-centered idea. I should put people's needs first. We should put the organization's needs first. We should put the family's need first. We should put the individual need, individual's need first. So the idea that I must always show my stuff, people should know me, is self-focused. That idea is not people-focused. It is self-focused. And we must move away from self-focus to focus on people's need. We, we grow more in the place of giving. It is more blessed to give than to receive. So when we are preoccupied with giving, we grow and we, we get better. We, our capacity enlarges more when we learn to give not just to receive. It's the place of giving that we grow. My goodness. When Jesus multiplied, when Jesus fed the 5,000 people, the the meal, the little meal that the child brought, five loaves and four fishes, he broke the bread and he blessed it. He gave it to the disciples and the Bible says as they gave it, it multiplied. As they gave so it multiplied blessings multiply in the place of giving wisdom multiplies in the place of giving so we cannot be self-centered we 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 cannot be it cannot be all about me myself and i we have to be givers and we have to be humble and we have to be patient so in order to increase our capacity You need more spoon sizes for your salt. The salt needs what? It needs spoon sizes. Several sizes of spoons. So once again, look at this. Several cups here with each of their own needs. I as the salt, I as the man who who is to provide the salt, I have to have this. Several 
spoons in my capacity. The problem is that many of us lack the right tools, the right sizes of spoons for the right, for the appropriate people. That's the problem. We lack the appropriate spoon size for appropriate people. <laughs> so, if I'm going to increase my capacity, I have to increase my spoon sizes. I have to increase my spoon sizes. I cannot be a one spoon guy. If I'm a one spoon guy, if this is the size, it means if I'm a one spoon size, I'm going to be able to only reach one kind of people. Maybe this guy. Or let's assume it's, this is the only spoon I have. I'm probably going to be able to reach this guy. And that's all. That's why the knowledge gap is. So if I'm going to be able to reach more people, I got to increase my spoon sizes. You need more spoons. You need more spoon sizes. The more sizes of spoons you have, the more people you have capacity for. The more situations you have capacity for. The more situations you have capacity for. The more wisdom to dish out wisdom. Wisdom is one thing. The wisdom to dish out wisdom. To impact wisdom is another. Having wisdom is one thing. The wisdom to impact wisdom into other people is another. What you need is more spoon sizes. You need to enlarge your capacity. You need to build more capacity. There are people you don't yet have the skills to reach. That's why you can't seem to reach them yet. Maybe you are using the wrong size spoon. Maybe you're using the wrong spoon sizes. Maybe you're using the wrong spoon sizes. The more sizes you have, the more types of people you are able to reach. So if I'm going to be able to increase my capacity, I've got to be able to increase my spoon set. No matter who you are, whether you are a teacher or a mentor or a father or a husband or a spouse or an employee or an employer, you need more spoons. Get more spoons. Get yourself more spoons. Get yourself more spoon sizes. You're going to need them. As you go forward in your career, you're going to need more spoon sizes. As you go forward in your in endeavor, you're going to need more spoon sizes. As you go forward in your marriage, if you're married, you're going to need more spoon sizes. If you're not married, uh, you're going to need more spoon sizes for marriage. <laughs> yes, if, if you are going to grow in anything at all, in parenting, you're going to need more spoon sizes. This is, this is a spoon, this is a tablespoon. Yeah, this is one tablespoon. This is a half tablespoon. You can see this is smaller than this. And this is an eighth. This is a, this is a fourth. So this is a one tablespoon, half, a fourth of a tablespoon. So you need this for a fourth tablespoon people. You need this for a half tablespoon people. I'm, when I when I come meet when I meet somebody and it's a tablespoon person, then I'm going to pull out this. This is how I'm going to relate with this person. Next time I meet a person, it's a half, it's an, it's a, it's a half tablespoon p person. I'm going to pull out this, and then I'm going to relate with them with this tool. Next time I meet a a, a fourth of a tablespoon person, I'm going to pull out this. And I'm going to relate with them based on this. And then when I meet other people, I'm going to... Now, I still have a problem. I still have a problem because I only have a, a, a tablespoon and a half and a, and a quarter and a fourth. I'm still going to need an eighth of a tablespoon to my, to my tool set. I'm still going to need a sixteenth for 16th people. I'm going to need a 32nd if it exists for 32nd people. No matter where you are, no matter where, what, what level you are, you need to increase your capacity. You're going to have to increase your capacity. And guess what? Quite honestly, there are people that this is what they need. And if you don't have this, 
you're not going to be able to relate at their level. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So you need several spoon sizes ranging from this to this, to this to this to this and to everything in between this and this. <laughs> My goodness. Everything in between. Uh, Paul said, I, I became all things to all men that I might save some. What a phenomenal statement. What an amazing thing to say. He said, I became all things to all men that I might save some. So for the Jew, I became like a Jew. For the Greek, I became like a Greek. For the Samaritan, I became like a Samaritan. That I might be able to reach them. Hmm. Many of us are too Greek to be able to reach the Jews. Some of us are too, some of us are too Jewish to be able to reach the Samaritans. Some of us are too Samaritans to be able to reach the Romans. <laughs> we need to put off our Samaritan head sometimes and be a Roman. Sometimes we need to put off our Roman cap and be a Samaritan. Sometimes we need to put off our church cap and relate with people where they are. Or else we can't get them to church. If all we ever speak is Christianese, we need to learn the language of, of that the people out there understand. Daniel understood the language of Babylon. He spoke Jewish and he spoke the Babylonian language. That's why he was able to be relevant at the court of kings, seven, four kings, uh, Darius, Cyrus, uh, um, Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar. He served under four regimes in not in his own country, in a foreign country where they were slaves because he was outstanding. My goodness, because he was outstanding, he was able to be relevant to different kings at different times in a strange land. How much more capacity can a man have? If we're going to have impact, if we're going to be relevant in the times we are in, we need more capacity. What we need is enlargement of capacity. Let's not keep blaming the system and keep blaming the people and keep saying the world is too dark, uh, uh, the people are too ungodly, they are too unchurched, they are too... If Daniel could make impact in Babylon, we have no excuse. <clears throat> Daniel was a slave. He's supposed to be angry and bitter and completely out of out beside himself but he was able to have impact he was able to be relevant and kings after kings chose him and put him in their regime he was outstanding him Meshach, Shadrach and Abednego were outstanding men of skill and knowledge but above all they had relevance they were able to speak with wisdom they had relevance what you need is enlargement of capacity <laughs> you need an enlarged heart to accommodate more it's easy to say the problem is not us it's just them they don't listen but have you realized that the same people you don't you say don't listen to you listen to other people maybe you need to add a spoon to your spoon set you may just be using the wrong spoon. How are you sure the way you see things is the way it is? We often see things the way we are, not the way they are. And the only thing next to blindness sometimes is seeing things from only one point of view. A wrong approach turns people off. It always does. You may have salt, but it's not how much salt you have that matters. It's how much salt they need. It's not how much salt is in your pantry that matters. It's how much salt the soup that you're cooking needs. Because you don't put all the salt that you have in your pantry in one soup. The same way you cannot bring an unbeliever to Christ. Just You may not be able to bring an unbeliever to church on the first meeting, on the first day. But just put a positive word in their lives. Something, whatsoever is right, whatsoever is noble, whatsoever is of good report, whatsoever is uh, a divine 
the next time you have a bigger room to have conversations with them. Like I said before, the only thing next to blindness is seeing things from only one point of view. There are several points of view to this house that I'm in. If I'm standing in front, I'll see a different picture. If I'm standing on the north, I'm uh, north, I'll see a different picture. If I'm standing on the right, at the right side, I'll see a different picture on the on the south, on the east, and from the from the west. So that's sometimes how people how come people have different perspectives on life. My art teacher used to position us round an object and tell us to do a sketch. And he expects us to submit different drawings when we're done. Even though it's the same object, he's expecting different drawings. Sometimes your view on God and who God is may be right, may be true, but it may not be the whole truth. Somebody else may have the, a view on or viewpoint on God that adds to yours, that gives you a more complete picture. That's why the Bible says he, he gave us several gifts that until we that we may until we all comprehend together His fullness. So we are until we comprehend that we may comprehend. He says that we may comprehend with all the saints, the length and the breadth and, and the height of, of who God is. So, not the word comprehending with all the saints. That means I need you and I need you and you need me and we need each other that we may comprehend God more. Because when we compare notes, we appreciate the goodness and the grace of God and the power of God even more than what we've seen in our individual lives and it makes us to be able to appreciate who God is. After all, being honest doesn't always mean that you are right. You can be honest and be wrong. You can be sincerely wrong. The most important thing, as I bring this to an end, the most important thing is relevance at every level. Relevance at every level. Relevance at this level and relevance at this level and relevance at this level. Jesus was relevant enough to be able to find the right words for a harlot and to be able to speak the right words to the church leader, leaders, the, the reverends and the bishops and the senior pastors of his time. He had re 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 relevance with Matthew, the tax collector, and with Bartholomew, and with all, and with, with the fishermen. He, he, and then he would come to the temple and everybody saw that he grew in grace. He grew in understanding. The more spoon sizes you have, the more equipped you are for different kinds of people, the more people you are able to reach. And the more people you are able to reach for the kingdom. So for your vision, you need more spoons. You need more capacity. For your vision, you need more capacity. For your business, you need more capacity. In your every sphere of influence, you need more capacity. Paul said, I say it again, I've learned to be all things to all men, that I might save some. We need to lay aside our ego and put on the lenses of love to be able to see people the way they are, to be able to see things the way they are, not just the way we are. We must be willing to go as far as Christ Jesus would go to help somebody. Matthew eighteen twelve. Now how think ye, if a man have a hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray. Doth he not leave the ninety and nine and goeth into the mountains and seeketh that which is gone astray? The heart of love is compelling to be able to bend over backwards when we need to, to go rescue somebody and to bring them out into the light.